Hey everybody. So uh, a few weeks ago I did a Facebook live video where I was kind of showing how you can rewrap um, marimba mallets for music classrooms, things like that, how I make drum mallets. Um, if you're friends with me on Facebook and you can dig on my page back far enough you could probably find that video. But I think I'd like to just make a video again that people can share that you can easily find and share here on YouTube because uh, a couple of people have already asked me if they could share it, if I could make a shareable version or something like that. So here's an easy video that you can share uh, if you need some help in knowing how to rewrap marimba mallets for your music classroom. Um, if you're a percussionist who's trying to make professional mallets, you can you can do this uh, for the time being, but I would not really advise using the mallets that I'm going to wrap today. Uh, if you're like a college student or you're going to perform professionally, you want to, you know, go to like Steve Weiss and buy yourself some uh, some professional mallets. <laughs> but in the meantime, say you're a classroom music teacher or even someone at home who has like an old xylophone or marimba or something, and you just want to have some mallets to play for it, or you have like your music teacher who has an old mallet, the yarn's falling off and you, you want to rewrap it. So here's a couple things that you could do that might work. Um, just know that on the more professional level, a vibe mallet like this one, which is made of a rattan handle, which is sort of bendable, uh, or a marimba mallet like this one, which are usually made of birch, that's usually preferred wood for marimba mallets. Um, they usually measure anywhere from 16 to 17 inches in length. You're probably not dealing with anything quite that long with a an elementary music classroom where you have something a little more along the lines of this. Um, this mallet here measures about 13 inches in length. All right, This one's an old one with a rattan handle, so it's a little bendable. But you might have others that are a little more, you know, just ignore the tape, <laughs> but a little more along the lines of something like this. This was made for a log drum many many years ago it looks like someone took a like a bouncy ball and just sort of stuck it on the end you can do that if you want to <laughs> if you if you know how to drill a hole into a bouncy ball and get it to fit on the end of the of the wooden dowel um, if you're rewrapping a mallet from a music classroom you probably if you take all the yarn off will end up with something like this usually it might be a wooden end maybe something that looks a little more this way you know, and it might be a little more squared off, rectangular shaped. Some of them might be mushroom shaped. Um, this one, of course, is a ball end. I'm going to wrap this one today. So what you need is you need to have this to start with, the uh, stick itself and the core right here. If you don't have anything at all and you're starting from scratch, you could, I'm sure you could look around online and see what kind of kits you could find out there. I've, I've seen some websites that are showing you how to make your own mallets from scratch. Some are even showing you how to make your own marimba from scratch if you're good with working with wood. I, I don't know. Um, you can go to a craft store like Michael's or even a Home Depot maybe or someplace like that where you can get wooden dowels. And you'd want to get something along the lines of this. I don't know exactly what the measurement is on a ruler. It looks like it comes out to about two eighths, two or three eighths of an inch, I think. Um, but you got to be careful because these aren't extremely durable. You know, you hit too hard, they could break. However, you do have to have something to make the core on the end of the stick. Now, like I said, if you have rubber bouncy balls and you want to try to drill a hole and put them on there, that's great. Uh, the core for most marimba and xylophone mallets, especially marimba mallets, would preferably be rubber. Like if I took this yarn off, chances are I'm going to find something that's a little softer underneath this yarn. Not necessarily a hard wooden ball, probably something more along the lines of rubber. But you can get wooden ball ends to put on, the, on these dowels, and they work fine. right? So you have like a piece of wood and you would just want to put some glue, some hot glue inside the hole and then stick it on the end, let the wood dry, and then you can start wrapping your mallet. Okay, But I'm going to start with this one today, which was actually an old vibe mallet that was sort of handed down to me many years ago. So I took all the yarn off, as you can see. The core is pretty hard wood. I'm tapping it here on this, um, this wooden box. All right, <laughs> And you can see it's a little bit on the softer end. I don't know exactly what kind of wood it's made out of, but again, the, the handle here is rattan. 
So I'm going to use that to start. So once you have your your core and your stick and everything ready to go, um, it's time to start wrapping your mallet. Here's a couple things that you need. You need some good strong yarn. All right. I prefer I, I prefer black, but you can use any color you want. All right. You're gonna eventually need a nice strong needle, but we'll get to that at the end of it. And this is optional, but it's a good option. You want something to sort of soften this up. If this is wood. If it's just straight up wood, that might work for some for some xylophones, um, but that can also really dent up the wood, especially if you have kids that are just really hammering away at it. Um, most most of us from marimba mallets would prefer to have either a rubber core or something rubber around the wooden core to soften it up. Now you can buy rubber tubing or even like silicone tube. I don't even know what kind of materials you could find out there. It's I understand it's kind of expensive, but it can last a long time. And you'd get like a small diameter and a long tube of it, and you'd cut it as you need it to sort of wrap it around. But here's what I use. Splicing tape. Nice and simple. Easy to find. You can find it at most hardware stores used to wrap different wires and stuff. And splicing tape has a soft kind of quality to it. And here's how it works. When you get it, you know, it comes in a bit of a thicker roll, usually like this, you know. You can see I've used a lot of it. You take out as much as you need, which will probably be about half a finger's length, maybe about, about to there, you know. That's about how much you need. I'm going to cut off that much. And the way splicing tape works is as you pull it, there's this covering, this protective covering on it that comes off. See, it's starting to come off and, ah, there we go. And you can peel it and it peels off. And it's not, the tape itself is not actually sticky, like it doesn't have an adhesive surface. It sticks to itself. So you pull it to stretch it a little bit. I gotta get used to this camera. <laughs> stretch it a little bit and then you grab this and you pull see it comes off so you you take all that protective coating off so that you have your uh your little piece of splicing tape just like that and then i get it started hold it in place and then i just spin I got you, this is tricky. You got to kind of hold it in place with one hand, one finger, while you wrap it around with the other hand until you finally get one side to meet the other side and then it sticks to itself. See that? Oh, it's coming off. I didn't quite get it enough. So let me get a little better. And as I'm doing this, I'm stretching the tape. I'm stretching it so that it'll stick better. There we go. Now it's on there, see? It's, looks like a little <laughs> little headband. All right, so I'm gonna keep wrapping it around until it's all out. And now I have a little bit of a softer coating. It's not quite the same as having a rubber core, but it's a little bit softer. See, that's a lot different than that. Now it's muffled a little bit more. So I actually went ahead and used two more pieces of splicing tape and wrapped the whole thing up like this. But now I have a much softer sound. Okay. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do this part of the whole thing if you don't mind a nice, harder, louder, sort of clinky sound, which are fine for most xylophones. But this is one way you can soften the blow. All right. Now that I have that in place, I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm going to tie it. I'm going to put a little bit of a loop around the base of the core right there. All right, I'm just going to get it around and tie it into a knot. There we go. Now I have it started. Now it's time to start wrapping the mallet. Now in order to do this, you want to wrap it not quite from the bottom to the top and straight over this way. But you want to go from like a 5 o'clock position to an 11 o'clock position. So it's sort of at a diagonal. 
All right. And let me show you that on a core that's a little easier to see. So you, you would go from a five o'clock position here to an eleven. Ah, get over there to an eleven o'clock position this way. There. Yeah. It's a little harder to do when your core is completely round, but once you get it going, it stays on there pretty good. And it works really well when you have the uh, splicing tape or rubber on your mallet. It stays on there pretty good. And once I wrap it the first time, sort of a diagonal here, then I turn the mallet a little bit and I do it again. I turn the mallet and I do it again. For me, it's not an exact science, you know. Uh, once you get it going, it starts to make more sense, <laughs> you know. But it's not going to look perfect. It's just going to, I'm just getting that yarn on there. Okay. Get a little more here. And you can see it's starting to, starting to show a pattern here. And I'm going to just keep that going. All right, and then just keep wrapping and wrapping. Let's get rid of this little piece that's sticking out. So I got I got a little bit of a hang there from where I tied it. I'm just going to cut that off. And that's it. All right, and I'm probably going to do this about a hundred times, maybe more. But you would just keep wrapping it and wrapping it. All right, so. I didn't exactly, I, you know, I'm going to be honest, I didn't exactly count 100 or whatever. I'm, I'm not keeping count. I just know from doing this enough on my own, kind of eyeing it up where I want it to be. So I got it to the point about where I want it to be, right? As you can see, here's what it looks like. And if you're more, if you're smoother than I am, if you're craftier you and you layer it just right, like you'll get used to, to doing it in a way, if you do it enough, that works best for you because the best kind of mallet would be to have an even wrapping all the way around the core of it, you know, so that you don't have like some pieces of yarn sticking out more than others. You know, oh, here it's a little bit softer than it is over here, but I'm not too worried about that right now. So now that I have it about where I want it, I have my needle. I cut the thread, the yarn, and I put my needle on the end now. So I'm going to take this end of it. You want to have a good bit left and take your needle. And I'm going to first put it through the base. This We're doing this now to make sure everything stays in place and doesn't fall apart. So I'm going to put it through the base of the core right here. Ah and push it through so that it comes through the other side. All right. Pull that through. Nice and taut. Then I'm going to bring it up to the crown. Okay. I could see that that one piece of thread wasn't exactly as tight as I wanted it to be where I did my last little loop. So I'm just giving it a good pull to make sure it stays nice and taut there. There we go, without breaking the yarn. And then I come up to the crown, find my starting point, and I'm going to thread it through here at the top. You, you want to imagine a little bit of a diameter, a little circle going around the top of the crown kind of like that right around the top of the crown you find a point push the needle through you got to sort of dig down underneath it All right, you might need a little help here push it through see that and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all the way through Sometimes I need to get a hard surface, so I'm using an Altoids box and push on the end of it, but get it through, and that's a start. All right. <clears throat> Come over to the other side, let's see. 
push that through. So once I've pulled it through, then I come back to where I started again, but I turn the mallet slightly. I pick a, a new point just slightly next to that last one that I did, and I push it through, dig down a couple layers and push it through. Come back, turn the mallet slightly, and do this again. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I go all the way around the crown of the mallet. Okay. And this is gonna hold everything in place. This is going to hold all that yarn in place. Okay. Again. Hmm. Once I've gotten all the way around, stitching through the crown, and I've pretty much come full circle, then I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick a point close to the stick, All right. push it through, leave it through once to tighten it, then I come back. Again. And again. And I'm going to go all the way around until I come back to the point where I started. When I'm done and I'm satisfied with getting around both the bottom and around the crown, then I just take it, give it one more one more needle through the crown at the top. Then come back to the bottom, get it another one through the bottom. And I'm going to do this a couple times until I'm almost out of yarn, until I've almost reached the end of the yarn. Just so you can just cut it at that point. And you don't have to worry about it really coming off. And I think one more down here will be good. The very bottom. Pull that through. Cut the end. And there you have a mallet. One mallet. All right. Now I'm going to make another one. 